What is a risk assessment? It's hmm. a lot of things. Um, <laughs> how can I break it down? Just do it in layman's terms. Like you was doing interview questions. Hey, explain to me what is a risk assessment as if you were talking to a five-year-old. <laughs> okay. So instead of saying it, what it is actually, I'm just going to say, I'm just going to, I'm just going to speak broadly. So first of all, risk assessments are crucial. In my time of finding out what I need to do, I figure out what part of the day I want to do risk assessments. Just previously being in the position, I've been in positions where people do risk assessments all day. There's no timeline to actually do them, but if you structure yourself out, then that's you have a time to do risk assessments and it's pretty crucial. So first you like identify everything, right? So your first step is to always identify any assets that need to be like protected, physical servers, your computers, digital. So customer data, intellectual property. So for example, if I'm assessing a new cloud-based system, the assets might include data stored in the cloud and the applications that are actually running on it. Once that's identified, then we're going to move on to identifying potential like threats and vulnerabilities, which I call like the fun stuff. And threats can be anything from your typical cyber attacks or natural disasters, Florida, hurricanes, hail, anything that can happen. And then that's going to exploit those threats. So for example, again, like if that cloud system that we have lacks that multi-factor authentication, this is now signifying a really big vulnerability because we're lacking that. Once that's done, once we always assess and we figure out like the threats and vulnerabilities and we have them identified, now it's time to assess that type of impact. What's the actual impact and likelihood of these risks actually happening, actually occurring now that we have them identified? And that refers to damages, loss, or anything of of that nature. Now, the likelihood is a probability of the risk actually occurring. Cyber attacks happen all the time. But if a cyber attack was to happen on a cloud system, it could have a high impact due to the sensitive data that was involved on it. But if we had a stronger security measure, then that likelihood might be really low. It may not happen at all. Once that's done, then we evaluate like the existing controls. So different places have different controls that are put in place. I just evaluate like technical, like your firewalls, encryption, and then sometimes administrative, which a lot of people overlook, right? So your policies and your training programs, which are pretty crucial. You might think that it's simple, but it's pretty crucial. And it's just really important to determine like how effective these controls are and if there's any gaps that needs to be addressed, which is another thing also. Based on that impact from that, right, and the likelihood and effectiveness of those controls, then I get the risk level. Then I'm like, okay, I can determine what type of risk level that it is. And then this helps prioritize which risks need immediate attention. Like, what do I need to pay attention to first? And then that's used with a risk matrix. And just to visualize and rank them from like low to high. Once that's done, if you break it down, like just for the mitigation strategies that you have to create afterwards for high priority risks, I develop mitigation strategies to reduce the impact and likelihood. Very important. So this involves like additional security measures, updating policies, even something simple as training sessions help a lot, honestly. So for example, if I was to put that into play, if I identify like a vulnerability in the cloud systems authentication process, a mitigation strategy would involve like implementing MFA, multi-factor authentication and regular security audits. And you would be surprised how a lot of companies, they don't have that. It's just something that is big, but they still overlook it. And then my favorite part of everything that I will always say in this position is document <laughs> and always cover yourself at all times. The entire risk assessment process is documented. And when I say thoroughly, very thoroughly, um, I create a really detailed report. It includes like risks, their assessed impact, their likelihood, current controls, proposed mitigation strategies. And then this is actually shared with relevant stakeholders, whoever is important or who needs to know what's going on with your IT and your senior management, just to make sure everyone is aware of those risks and like the steps that are being taken to actually mitigate them because your job is to not implement. You work with other departments to do that. And then the biggest part also that a lot of companies skip that I've witnessed, it's not a one-time thing. You don't just, a risk assessment is just not one and done. You have to continuously monitor those risks and review the effectiveness of those strategies. Um, so regular audits and reviews to help ensure that the new risks are identified and addressed pretty promptly. And um, yeah, it helps the organization stay proactive about managing potential threats. So those are a very uh, nice explanation of risk assessments <laughs> in a nutshell. Yeah, no, that was a good one. 
Because while you were saying that, I said, I need to follow this up with, you know, what are some of the most significant risks that you see plaguing business today? And how does mm-hmm. GRC factor in mitigating some of those? Mm-hmm. And you kind of touched on one, really. Yeah. <laughs> you mean the cyber attacks? Yeah. At the crux of everything, some type of way, somebody has gotten access on some server. Like the that AT&T, it, like, right? <laughs> <laughs> like the AT&T breach. But there's like that, for example, like there's always breaches. There's always things being stolen, cyber attacks, ransomware, phishing. You get those emails all the time. You, a lot of people are starting to be like, is this email real? They do them in jobs. They get your information for jobs and stuff like that. You sign up for jobs. They're not really jobs. They're fake posting. They're taking your information, malware. You're opening stuff up on the computer. You're out in public on public Wi-Fi, opening stuff. It's a lot. And their businesses are really exposed to a lot of that because a lot of their employees, the ones who aren't really like aware of their surroundings or aware of security like that, just exposes them to a lot of things like that. Weak passwords, unpatched software. It's the little things. It's not just phishing emails. So it's a lot of things put into play, honestly. 